Hello, welcome to Classical Greek Latin. This is Greek lesson number eight, and this is for chapter six in your Crosby and Schaefer textbook. My name is Josh, and I am the teacher for this course. So this week we're going to be learning about the alpha stem, feminines. So we've done the masculine and neutered Omicron stems, so now we're going to do the feminine stems. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to do some adjective noun matching. We're going to talk about some nuances to the alpha feminine stem um, declension. And then we're going to talk about attributive versus predicate position for the for this particular or for the adjectives and noun with the definite article. Okay, so let's jump into here and just read this. So the alpha declension nouns whose nominative endings in in alpha or eta are feminine. Because the feminine article shows eta in the singular, nouns and adjectives in eta are presented first. Both types are the same in the plural. So what he's alluding to is there are some nouns where the singular form will have an alpha here instead of an eta. We don't need to worry about that right now, but that's what he's talking about is uh, an eta are presented first. So later on, we will cover nouns and adjectives that have alpha and the single here, singular here, um, in addition to having the alpha like I here, eis, os in the plural. Okay, so for these, they're going to present the eta first because it's convenient because go along it goes along with the definite article which is uses the eta in the singular but then the alpha in the plural with the omega being the exception for the genitive plural. So I hope that makes sense. So let's just go through this real quick. So we have he kale skene, the beautiful tent. Okay, um, if you notice. This up here says skene pas ho bios. So all the world's a stage. So they're getting the word stage from skene. So in ancient Greece, they would have a backdrop, what we, what we would call a backdrop, to plays on stage. So that was called a tent or a skene, right? Well, this is where we get our English word scene or scenery from, right? comes from skene. So it's like a, a backdrop, a backdrop in a theater on behind the stage, right? Before the, behind the actors. So all the world is a stage or a tense or a backdrop, if you will. Okay, that's just for fun. But let's look at the declension here. So basically the key with the declension here is you just want to memorize this. So you have your definite articles. So hey, and again, these are not listed here, but is nominative. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and that is your singular. So he, tes, te, and there's a subscript there with the dative singular, just like there is with the masculine or neutered. And then you have tain, okay? So that's singular. And now let's look at the definite articles for the plural. So you have hi, that is a, a rough breathing, right? Hi, ton, tais, and then tas. Okay, so the main the main difference here is instead of having the omicron like you do with the masculine, you now have the eta and the alpha, right? But the principle is still the same, right? So let me let me just write this out for you, and this will hopefully help your memorization to see these side by side. Okay, so let's do nominative, genitive, dative, and accusative, okay? And we'll do singular, and then we'll do the masculine, okay? And then we will compare this with the, we'll skip the neuter for right now, we'll just do the feminine, right? So let's do the definite article. So we have in the masculine, we're going to have ho, okay? And then in the feminine, you have 
the eta, so hey, but rough breathing, rough breathing, okay? So you know this one already, the masculine. Now we're learning this one, right? So same idea, rough breathing, rough breathing. And then you're gonna have the um, two for the genitive and the masculine. And then you're gonna have pace for the feminine, okay? This is a little different as far as the, uh, the analogy goes. You have a diphthong over here, which is long, but you have the circumflex, and then you have a naturally long vowel, eta, over here, okay? And then you have your dative, the subscript there under the omega, and then you have, an omega is naturally long, right? And then you have, that's why it's called mega, and you have the feminine, dative there with the eta and then a subscript also okay now in the masculine you have ton okay so there's the omicron the omicron stem now you have the eta stem here or the alpha stem and you're going to have pain okay Now you note that I'm putting a cutes on these, this because we're not putting any words after them. So these will almost always be grobs because a definite article is almost always followed by another word. I can't think of a time that it would not be followed by another word, okay? But yeah, just keep in mind when a accent mark is followed by another word, it's gonna be a grov and not an acute like I put here. Okay, so that's the singular. So let's write this out now with the plural. So let's rewrite our declensions. Declensions, nominative, genitive, dative, the accusative, and now we're gonna do plural. So I'll abbreviate that PL, and then we're gonna do our masculine first, and then we'll do our, our feminine. So this is definite, artic definite articles again. So remember in the nominative plural, you have hoi, okay? So you have the Omicron, and then with the Yota, and then rough breathing. Here, you have the Alpha, so you're going to have Alpha with the Yota and rough breathing, so hi instead of hoi. So you have the masculine and the feminine there. Okay, now the genitive is going to be the same in either case. It's going to be ton. Ton. Okay. So that's the same. The dative is going to be, again, we have the same idea, same analogy here. We have tois with the Omicron followed by Iota, and then you have tais, the alpha followed by the Iota with the circumflex over both, okay? And now here you have tus, for the accusative and the masculine, accusative plural, and here you're gonna have pas, And I'm going to put a long mark over the alpha because it is long. Okay, so just like you have a, a long diphthong here, you have a long single vowel there. So it would be, instead of tas, it would be tas, right? So instead of like a short tos, it's tus. So there's a similar analogy going on there with a, a lengthened vowel in the accusative plural. All right. So I hope that helps your memorization seeing that side by side with the masculine. So let's go ahead and go back here to the book. Okay, let me get this back and focus for us real quick. All right, so let's just look at this paradigm here, this declension that they've provided for us, and just do a refresher real quick. So the endings, again, I did the definite article for you because the definite article in the for the alpha stem for the feminine is a model for the endings or the inflections that we're going to put on the ends of these words to change the case, its function in the, its function in the sentence, right? So... All right, so let's just go through this. We'll go through the endings first, 
And just keep in mind, this is nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, okay? And then we have the singular first, and then we have the beautiful, and then the tense. So you have your adjective, and then you have your noun. And then over here, you would have the plural, hi, ton, tais, tas, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and then we have the endings over here, okay? So let me just read through these real quick. We have a, ace, a, ain. Now note the endings, the case for the adjective and the noun has to match, okay? And gender, number, and case. So we have that. We have a, a, okay? We have ace, ace, all right? So genitive singular feminine, genitive singular feminine. A, a, dative singular feminine, dative singular feminine. So you get the idea, ain, ain, okay? All right, now let's do the plural. The plural is over here. Now this is where we go from using the eta to the alpha. So we have not, we have I in the nominative plural. Again, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative. This is all plural over here. And again, we have kalai, the beautiful, the beautifuls, plural. Tense, that is tense, right? So we have I, I. Okay, on, on. Ice, ice. Os, os. Okay, and now note the long mark over there. So it's not os, it's os, os. Okay, now adjective and noun have to match in, gen in case, number, and gender. And they do here. And here, these words come from the same declension. So they also have the same form. That is I, I. There will be words later on that come from different declensions that will have a different form ending that will look different, and, but yet still be the same case, number, and gender. So here, Crosby and Schaefer, again, they're introducing it to us slowly and at an easy level for us. So everything matches, both in case, number, and gender, right? Nominative, gen, nominative sing, or excuse me, nominative plural feminine, nominative plural feminine, but then it also matches in the, in the form or the spelling I and then I, okay? So let's look at the accents here. So you know the accent, so this is the nominative here. They've given us basically the dictionary form, nominative singular, nominative singular, and note the accent is on the ultima in both words, okay? So, We've done accents before, but let's go through and review. So the accent's going to stay or persist there when it comes to adjectives or nouns, right? And that's what we see here, accent on the end. And then note for your genitive and dative, it changes to a circumflex, which is to be expected, right? We've done that before. And then with the Omicron declension, right? For the masculine and the neutered. And then it goes back it's going to be just a regular accent here, acute or grave, right? And then here, skene, again, the accent starts out on the ultima from the dictionary entry, which happens, which is nominative, singular, right? That's what we have here. So it's going to do the same thing there. It's going to say the same on the nominative and for genitive and dative. It's going to go to a circumflex, then back to that acute on the end, okay? And here... To be redundant, it goes to a grave on Kalein in the in the accusative singular here for no other reason than it's followed by another word, skamein, right? So they're presenting this paradigm, this declension, as a tiny little sentence, right? So the beautiful tent, the beautiful of the beautiful tent, to or for the beautiful tent, the beautiful tent direct object, okay? Now let's look over here in the plural. Again, everything is as we expect you have the accent stays on the ultima. And then for the genitive and the dative, it goes to a, a, a circumflex, which is what we would expect, and then back to a normal grave or acute on the ultima where it was originally, okay? 
one thing and that's a little different here is for Kome. Okay. So this would be hey Kome, right? So this is nominative, singular, feminine. So let's let's add a direct or a definite article there. So we'll say hey Kome. Okay. So we have our dictionary form here. Note that the accent is on the second to last syllable or the the penal, right? So that is going to persist there so long as we don't violate the, the three more rule, right? We've talked a lot about that. So let's look at this. So we have come, okay? There are two mores under the eta, two under the omega, right? For link, a long vowel has two, a short vowel has one. That is more or measure of time. So we're going to have the acute on, you could say, the second more of that omega. Let me write this out for you. So you're going to have one, two, one, two. And then you have one, two, three mores, right? So that, that principle is going to follow true all the way through. Okay. So we have eta, a, eta, ace, eta, a with the subscript, eta, a. All long vowels on the end. So we're just going to do an acute accent on the omega all the way through. Okay. Now when we go over here to the plural, we have I with an alpha, right? Now note, alpha yota on the end of the word is treated as short. And omicron yota at the end of a word is treated as short. So here, even though it's a diphthong, we have just a single more, right? And then under the omega, we have two mores. So if we were to put it just an acute over the omega, we would have just two mores we would be emphasizing. So the Greek ear is going to accentuate the two mores on, on the omega here and really force us to pronounce the full length of that long vowel by putting a circumflex there. Okay? So that's why you have a circumflex here, but not over here. Because this is long, or excuse me, because the alpha yota is short, and this eighth over here is long, if that makes sense. If you have questions or comments on this, just put that in the comments below. Okay, so I'm going to skip over the genitive for a second. I have the same idea here. Now we have alpha yota sigma, but here the alpha yota is not at the end of the word. The sigma is at the end. So here this is treated as long, right? So we're going to have the two mores there, two mores here. So we're in the same position here with a long diphthong as we were up here with the long ethos. So therefore, we're just going to put an acute over that omega, right? And try to keep it to a three more day feel, okay? Here we have a long alpha, so two more days there, two more days here, and again, acute there. Now, if you're looking at common, okay, of the villages, why, how did a circumflex get over that last syllable, that ultima, when in the dictionary, the accent is here. So in this situation, we would expect just an acute over the omega, just like we have an acute here over the omega with a long vowel. Okay, so this is long also, so why does it not follow the pattern? So let's look down below. Okay, at number, so they give us a, a note here for number four, uh, for the accents, for the accents of all forms of kome and mahe, except, except, here's our clue here, except the genitive plural, okay? The genitive plural of alpha stems originally ended, and here's the answer to our riddle here, Alpha ended in alpha sigma on, all right, comparable to Latin arum, right? Okay, so what they're saying is originally, okay, so you have Greek here, and then you have Latin here.
Okay, so what they're saying is the original form of the genitive plural in Greek was ason. Okay, similar to the Latin genitive plural arum. Okay, what happened, okay, is the sigma drops out. You can see that the sigma drops out, and then the alpha and the omega combine. But because the omega is longer than the alpha, the alpha gets swallowed up by the omega, and you're left with you're left with on. But to show that vowel contraction, they put a circumflex over that omega, which is what we have over here. Okay, so that is why that looks weird. There was a vowel contraction there in the history of Greek, and the only thing left over from that alpha sigma is the circumflex when the vowels combine together. So the alpha was swallowed up by the omega, and that it's indicated by lengthening or emphasizing the length of the omega and on the genitive plural, rather than maintaining and keeping the acute accent over the penult like you would expect. Okay? All right. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Again, if you have questions, let me know. Put those in the comments below, and I will get to those. All right, let's go to adjectives. So we've got paragraph 30 here. So adjectives of the Omicron and alpha declension have three endings, one for each gender, like Latin, bonus, bona, bonum. So you have masculine, feminine, neutered. Okay, so let's flip the page. And... All right, so such adjectives accent the feminine genitive plural like the genitive plural of the de om Omicron declension, okay? So they said inflect in all three genders, agathos and delos, right? So this is good, refined, and apparent or obvious, right? Let's compare with the paradigms on chapter 510. So this is going to be in the appendix. Let us, let's go look at that real quick because that is important. So yeah, go ahead and write that out on your own. I'm not gonna do it right here for you, but I will show you for your visual um, confirmation what it, where it's at in the back and we'll just look at it real quick. All right, so we're going to 510, paragraph 510. That is not, not page 510, but paragraph 510. All right, let's see here. Okay. So, adjectives. This is what we're talking about. The Omicron and the Alpha declensions. And this, this is the word we're talking about. One of them, Agathos. Okay. So take a look at this. Here's your masculine. Now this is singular. They include the vocative. You don't really need to worry about the vocative too much. So let's cross, put a line there. But we have the singular here. And then going below, they have the dual. Don't worry about the dual. And then you have the plural forms here. Okay. So this is a good place to check your work. What I would do is take these, take these adjectives, write them out in three genders that they could possibly be, in both the singular and the plural and then check your work with this chart in the back, um, paragraph 510, and that is page, page 280, okay? So you have os, let me wait for this to clear up. Okay, so you have os, u, o, on, and the plural, oi, on, ois, Us. Okay. Let's do this in the order that we learned them. Then in the neutered you have on, u, o, on. And in the plural you have a, on, ois, a. And then the feminine, what we are learning today, you have a, ace, a, the subscript, ain, that's singular. And then you have the plural, i, on, ice, us. That's the plural. OK. 
okay? So they have Delos down here also. They don't have the full chart because it is just a repeat of everything you see with Agathos, okay? Agathos, Agathe, Agathon, and the masculine, feminine, neutered. So th same thing with Delos. They give you the nominative and genitive to get you started in the singular. And then we have, so you have to go to the next page for the plural. Oh, excuse me. They give you the plural right here. They omit the they omit the dual, right? So there's the plural that get you started in the nominative genitive, and then everything else. When they don't provide the full chart like that, it's just going to be like this chart that they've given you up here. All right. So yeah, practice those with those two words, and then check your work in the back of the book on paragraph five ten. Okay. So let's talk about position of adjectives. We have, th this is the position of the adjective relative to the noun that is modifying or defining and also the definite article, all right? So let's just take a look here. This is a pretty simple concept. We have attributive adjectives and we have predicate adjectives. And all that means is that if an adjective and I'll, I'll, I'll walk through this, I'll walk you through this slowly, but an adjective with a definite article attached to the front of it is attributive. And then an adjective without a definite article is, is a predicate. Okay. It speaks on behalf of the noun, right? Pre, dico, right? Predicate. Okay. All right. So let's just read through this real quick. Paragraph 31. When an adjective or an adjective phrase accompanies a noun with a definite article, the definite or the adjective usually stand usually stands between the article and the noun as in English, okay? And they give us an example here. So this ho is a definite article, nominative singular masculine. It is going with anthropos, the man. Okay? But we want to describe what kind of man. So we're going to get more detailed. So we're going to put an adjective in there with it. And we're going to, now that definite article is going to do double work. It's going to both go with the just, dikaios, and also anthropos, right? So it's going to, both anthropos and dikaios are using that same definite article. So not just the man, the just man, okay? And like I said just a moment ago, because the the definite article is at the front of the adjective, this adjective is attributive, an attributive position, so it's the just man, opposed to a predicate, which would be the man is just. So this is the just man, okay? Ho di kaios anthropos, okay? All right. Let's go on here. All right, the, let's skip down here. The adjective may also follow the noun and have the article repeated with it, okay? So this is the other attributive position. This is, this form up here, hodikaios anthropos, we see that structure even in English, the just man, right? Literal translation there. Um, in Greek, you can repeat the definite article which is very common, and we do not do this in English, right? So we have ho anthropos, ho dikaios. So it's the man, the just. Okay, that's literally what it says in Greek, but in English we just translate it as the just man. So this is attributive position because you have the definite article attached to the front of the adjective here, dikaios, okay? And then ho anthropos, ho dikaios, the just man, attributive position, right? Just like this was attributive position, ho dikaios, and you could say ho anthropos, whereas the definite article here is doing double work. But you have the just man, attributive position, attributive position, okay? So in the above instances, the adjectives or phrase is said to be have the attributive position, okay? Let's go on to B here. When an adjective precedes the article or follows the article and the noun without the article being repeated, it is said to stand in the predicate position, okay? So this, this is not complicated. Let's just look at this. Here we have dikaios, ho anthropos, okay? So note that dikaios has no definite article on the front of it. 
So this literally just means the man is just. Now, the, the, the verb to be is not actually in the sentence, but it is implied, okay? Dikaios, just, hoanthropos, just is the man, okay? Or you could do it this way. The order does not matter. Hoanthropos, dikaios, okay? Now, note, don't get confused here. Even though you have a definite article here, preceding a noun and then an adjective, this adjective does not have the definite article immediately in front of it. So even though you had a similar situation here in the attributive position with one definite article for two words, an adjective and then a noun, that's attributive, the just man. Here, you have one definite article for just one word. Okay, so it does not carry over to the adjective here. So think of it this way. A definite article is always attached to its noun. And if there's anything between it and its noun, in this case, anthropos, it scoops up that word with that noun. Okay, so here, uh, here we have whole. The point of this definite article is the, the what? The man, the anthropos. But because the adjective got between the definite article and its noun, it gets caught up in that meaning, and now it means the just man. Okay? So a definite article is always intended for its noun, and an adjective only gets caught up with that movement, with that attribution if it comes between the definite article and its noun, it kind of gets squeezed in there with it. So, here you have the definite article with its noun. It's content like that. Dikaios now is an appendage on the outside of that, and so now it's not the just man, it's just the man, we have that, without interruption. But then we have the adjective later on, is just, that's the implication. Okay, so that is predicate, so it is speaking for the man, okay? So it's not the man, it's not the just man. The man, tell me something about him. Oh, he's Dikaios. He is just, right? Versus the just man, you don't have to tell me anything about him because it's self-explanatory, um, the just man. You don't have to tell me he's just because he is hodikaios anthropos. He's already the just man. But here, and I, I, I know I'm being somewhat redundant, here you have anthropos, just man, with his definite article, nothing squeezed in between there. So you, you got to tell me more. You got you to dictate some more about the man. So we're going to say is just, right? So the man is just. And they put is in parentheses because it's not actually in the Greek, but it is implied for us who have English ears, okay? All right. I hope that makes sense. We have one more thing to talk about here, dative of possession. Now, you know me. I don't like all these technical descriptions of the cases. If you just always translate Nominative as subject, genitive as of, with the English preposition of, and dative with the English prepositions to or for, and the accusative just treat it like the direct object, you are always going to be fine. And you don't need to memorize all these little technical titles, dative of possession. It's just dative. It's just two or four. But let's take a look at it, okay? So in English, we say there is no lid to the box. This is a very good example. All right, so you notice the word to, okay, so dative. The Latin says puedo est gladius, gladius, right? So if you've not taken Latin yet, we do offer Latin also, but this is going to be dative, right? 
This is dative singular masculine. So to the boy, right? So there is a sword to the boy, or the boy has a sword, or if you must insist, it's his sword. He possesses it. It's his possession, right? So in Greek, the dative is used to denote the possessor, right? The one who has the sword, right? That is in Latin here, puero, right? Um, while the thing possessed is subject of the verb to be. All right, so let's look at an, an actual Greek example here. All right, so agora uk ein te stratia. So we have te stratia, that's dative singular feminine. All right, army, two or for the army. So a market, uk, not, there was ein, singular, right? Third person singular. So there was not a market to or for the army. In English, that sounds weird, but you can still make sense of that, what that means. It is to say the army had no market, right? There was no market to or for the army. They, had no, they didn't have a market. So just translate the, the dative as you always do, and you'll be fine. And embrace the awkwardness of Greek. Because the more that you embrace that awkwardness, so for example, there a market not there was to the army, the more you can embrace that awkwardness, the sooner it will not be awkward and you'll actually be thinking in Greek. And you won't need silly little titles like dative of possession. You will just know it's dative and you will be fine. All right, so let's take a look here at our vocabulary. We are almost done for the day. Go ahead and, of course, memorize your vocabulary. Do flashcards. Keep in mind um, the accent marks. All right, these are my flashcards. I put the accent in a different color to emphasize it to me so that I don't overlook it, right? Um, you may do as you please, but I like flashcards, so that's what I recommend. But memorize these words. Uh, take note of little things like this. Like God, post-positive conjunction means for, right? And post-positive, I mean, again, it means typically it just comes after the first word of the sentence, right? Post means after, and posit means to set down, right? So that's all that means. Uh, let's see, is there anything else funny in here? Uh, ooh, different spellings for ooh. Ooh just means no or not. It means not. Uh, ooh before consonant, and then ook, you add a kappa to keep the oo from colliding with, an, with a vowel, if there's a vowel following it, right? And then a vowel with smooth breathing, if there's no breath in the next vowel, right? But if there is a vowel with rough breathing, then that rough breathing, it's not that we're just adding a he to the oo, it's that this kappa that is inserted to keep the oo com from combining with the following vowel, if there's rough breathing, that rough breathing then affects the kappa and turns it into a because of the rough breathing, okay? And if I can find an example of that, I will show you that real quick. Let's look down here at number four in your translation work. So there's oo, right? And then you have a song, all right? They were not. Okay, um, you have a vowel here, smooth breathing, and you have a diphthong vowel here, and then the kappa is put there onto the oo to keep that oo separate from this eta, so they don't, to keep them from combining, okay? So that is why the kappa is there, okay? That's why they have that form. It's not really a new form, it's just the kappa is being added to keep the vowels apart. And let's see here, do we have an example of the chi? Same idea with the chi, it's just inserted there, it's the kappa inserted, but then affected by the rough breathing and turned to a chi. All right, so I can, I'll go over that more in detail in the supplement lesson on Patreon. We have supplement lessons where we go over all the exercises on Patreon, it's $10 a month, and um, you can see all the exercises answered and explained there. 
All right, but let's go on with the vocab. We have skene, okay, nothing strange there. All right, let me see here. Okay, you have some new verbs here, feugo, flee, um, Latin cognate is fugio. We get fugitive comes from this, fuge, exile. And you can see the connection there between feugo, that's the verb of the noun, fuge. Okay, and remember nouns like fuge, flight, exile, always keep their gender. They cannot change gender. They are what they are, right? Um, they have the definite article, and that's that's it. Adjectives can change their gender to masculine, feminine, or neutered to correspond to whatever noun they're modifying at the time, okay? And then you have fulake, ace, hey, okay? And it, again, to review, just like with masculine, neutered nouns, you have the nominative form, this is a dictionary entry of the nominative form where the accent is going to try to persist. Then they give you the genitive ending, ace. So we know which declension this comes from. That comes from the alpha declension, which we learned today. And then you have the definite article in the nominative singular form. All right. And then this is feminine. So the guard. Okay. And then fulato. And again, you can see here the verb guard, the verb is connected to ful fulak, okay? And just as a, a fun side note, the dental here, t -t fulat, transforming into a palatal, t -t -t, that happens all the time in Greek. Um, so fulak, fulat, you, you know these words come, are interrelated, all right? They come from each other. I, I don't know which came first, the verb or the noun, but they are related. And the towel, the dental, and the kappa, the palatal, very common phonetic shift there. Okay. All right. Go ahead and do the exercises here. And let's make sure everything is straightforward. What use of the word do portions and heavy type suggest? Again, just parse it. Just tell me all the possibilities. Okay. So Spondon, that comes from sponde, which is a noun, so it can only be one gender, feminine, okay? So this is, I'll give you this answer here. This is going to be genitive, plural, feminine, and that's it. That's the only possibility it has, okay? If it had been an adjective, it could be either masculine, feminine, or neutered, all genitive, plural. But this is a noun and it is feminine, so there's only one choice. Genitive, plural, feminine. Okay, so parse each of these words accordingly. And again, I'll have the answers up for you and the explanations on Patreon. And then translate, this is pretty straightforward, just translate the Greek into English. And then down here, section C, you want to put the endings in, the inflections, the case endings here, right? Um, which makes, like, what makes sense, okay? So here you have a linking verb. I won't give the answer here. Linking verb, you have a nominative, all right? And this is singular feminine. So you, you, you're going to want, let's see here. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, work through that, and I'll give you the answers on Patreon. And flip the page here, page 18. All right, and that's, that's it. Word formation. This is just extra reading if you want to read through this. Okay, I will, I will not be covering this on Patreon. And then our next lesson will be for chapter seven. So that'll be lesson nine for chapter seven in Crosby and Schaefer. And that'll be next week. But for this week, we are done. So this was lesson eight for chapter six, uh, declensions of the alpha stem. 
All right, I hope that made sense. Hope that was clear. Hope that helped you get through this lesson. And put any comments, questions in the comments below. And if you'd like help with the homework, with the exercises, um, head on over to Patreon. The link is in the description below. And um, I'll meet you over there to go over the exercises. All right. Thank you and have a good day.